Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey, it's Sid. I'm at the front door. Front door's locked. Go away. Knock, knock. Who's there? Still Sid. I'm at the back door. Back door's locked. Go away. Knock, knock. Who's there? Still me. At the side door. Side door's locked, but I just opened the attic window for the next five seconds. Oh, crap. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive. Today, I'm gonna to cover the topic of port knocking. If you're new here, I produce weekly content to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe. It's completely free and really helps the channel grow. Without further ado, let's get into it. In order to connect to a remote server over the internet, you need to do so by sending some data over the network to an IP address of the server, specifically to a numbered port at that IP address. If you've configured your firewall properly, then only the ports that are actually using will be open. For example, I might write a firewall rule to open up port 22 so that I can SSH into the server. That being said, having port 22 open is like broadcasting to the world, hey, I'm running an SSH server over here. As long as your password is complex enough, an attacker won't be able to easily gain access, but it's still a consideration. This is where port knocking comes in. You can configure our system in such a way that usually there are no open ports, but if the server receives a specific sequence of connection requests, we will temporarily open up a firewall rule to allow access. Without knowing the correct sequence, a network map scan would show no open ports to a potential attacker, at which point hopefully they would move on to an easier target. To show this technique, I created a Docker image which is running a utility named knockd. The container is also running a simple Python web server so that we can see the results of this locking and unlocking. All of the code used in this video can be found in the DevOps Directive GitHub repo, which I've included a link to in the description below. Knockd is configured using a configuration file in which we specify each of the type of rule that we want to run. Here you see I've specified two sequences. The first one is used to open port 8888 if Nocti sees a sequence of requests on ports 7,000, 8,000, and then 9,000, all within five seconds. The second rule does the opposite. It closes port 8888 if it receives the opposite sequence. This opening and closing is done by adding and removing firewall rules using the IP tables utility. Here's the Docker file I'm using. Starting from an Alpine-based Python image, installing Nocti in and IP tables, before copying in all the configuration files and then running this entry point.sh script, which adds a firewall rule on port 8888, starts knockd, and then runs our Python web server. We can then run our container and then try to access the website in a browser. It fails. We then fire off a sequence of telnet requests on ports 7000, 8000, and 9000 before going back to the browser. Now the page loads successfully. To relock the port, I just send those same telnet requests in the reverse order, 987. Now when I go back to the browser, I can no longer load the page. More commonly, Nocti would be configured to open the port for some specified period of time before automatically closing it. This helps to prevent human error of accidentally leaving it open. Also, the sequence of ports doesn't have to be a static list like we've used. It could be dynamically generated based on factors like the current timestamp, which IP address the requests are coming from, or other factors to help make it harder for an attacker to guess the sequence. So that's it. Port knocking can be an effective strategy to help reduce the likelihood of network breach, but it should only be viewed as one component within a broader network security strategy. That said, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section what other network security techniques you've used to help protect your systems in the past. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button down below. And if you want to continue down the DevOps rabbit hole, check out one of these other videos from my channel. That's it for today. Remember, just keep building.